Welcome back to Destination Now. In today's episode, we begin exploring beautiful Sedona, Arizona. That's amazing. Wherever I go, I will always know everything I need is right here with me. It's time to let it all go. Today we're headed to Sedona to explore some place new. Neither of us have ever been there before, but we keep hearing from everybody we run into that it is, is an amazing place. So it sounds like there is a ton to do there. We aren't quite sure how long we're gonna stay, but we're gonna do things that interest us and we might have to come back for a round two at another point in time. Sedona is a popular Arizona desert town destination not too far from Flagstaff, that's surrounded by red rock buttes, steep canyon walls, and pine forests. It's noted for its mild climate and vibrant art community. Uptown Sedona is dense with new age shops, restaurants, spas, and galleries. The outskirt of town offers over 100 miles of hiking trails throughout the Red Rock State Park, many of which lead to some well-known rock formations such as Cathedral Rock and Devil's Bridge. Today we're leaving our boondocking spot at the top of Red Canyon Overlook where we joined you during our live stream. And we're gonna head into town, into Sedona, and see some of the top attractions. Tomorrow's supposed to be really windy again, so I don't know if we'll get any filming done tomorrow. So we just came down the road, about 10 minute drive from our boondock location. We're at the Palatki Heritage Site. I'll have to check the pronunciation on that. Not quite sure how it is, but it is an old site from about 1150 to 1350 AD and there are some cliff dwellings out here. We did not book a tour. We're gonna see if we can do that. They do require reservations ahead of time. So we're heading in right now to find out if we can do that today. We are just surrounded by red cliffs right now. It's pretty amazing. We're just taking a short little walk down to the information center. Oh man, it's so cool. Do you have reservations, Kirsten? We don't. We just showed up. You're not going to be able to get in today. Oh, really? Yeah, we're, we're booked yeah. solid unless we have people not showing up, but we already have people waiting in line. Since we didn't have reservations, they're pretty full today since the weather's really nice. We did get on a wait list for an hour, so if someone doesn't show up, we will be able to take the tour. Otherwise, we'll probably bypass this this time, and maybe next time we roll through here, we'll check it out. We've decided to check out the little museum they've got inside over here. And we've got five more minutes to find out if we're gonna make it to the 1230 tour or not. I'll let you know in five minutes. The Sanagua people, ancestors of the Hopi clan, occupied a large area of central Arizona from approximately 500 to 1425. The name Sanagua, meaning without water, is a Spanish term coined by archeologist Harold Colton in 1939. She told us to go up to the picnic table, so I assume we got in, but there's 13 people. They only allow 10 in at a time. Are you excited we made it? Yeah. <laughs> we got in. They were and nice. We had to wait like a half hour. They were nice to us. Yes. I'm Jim. Okay, I'm going to be bringing you up to the dwelling. A little bit of history about our ranch house here. Okay, this is the visitor center. It is the original Red Canyon ranch house. Charles Willard homesteaded this in 1923. He was in his 60s.
back about 900 years ago this was it this is where they source most of their water this is a plunge pool for that waterfall which obviously is not active right now but a good column of water spills off of their lands here that's what carved out this plunge pool that's a pour over this is a plunge pool we're gonna make our little climb now The site was abandoned for about 750 years. The landscape kind of recovered itself to the point where we don't really know where the trail that uh, led up here was. There has been no excavation here. There's been no rebuild here. There's been archeologic survey, surface analysis, some a little bit of stabilization and most of it being they replaced some of the lintels over the doorways. But otherwise, what you're seeing here is real thing. original structures from about 1100 AD mm -hmm. and how it was found, what it looked like when they found it in the late 1880s. Very intact, okay? Mm -hmm. And the reason for that, the biggest reason for that is that it's tucked away in this alcohol view where the drip line is about six or eight feet behind me. 18 rooms, nine here, nine there. Big one there, see the tall wall back there, mm -hmm. okay? That room is about four times the size of any of these. Mm -hmm. Most of these are habitation rooms. That big room is a ceremonial chamber. Let's start with this room to the left. Single story room. There's another single story room next to it. There's a wall in between. Now you got a two story structure. Now another two story structure. Third two story structure. And then on the very end, there's a little single story communal storage room. 18 rooms is a pretty sizable early Sanagua. Structure. As time went on, there were less uh, villages, but bigger. So they started coming together. Anybody know what happened in 1275? The drought? Yeah. The great drought, the 25 year drought. I think I indicated to you that they stayed for 175 years, which is a long time. Okay. Most of these villages were occupied for a while, they used everything up. Resource depletion was a was always an issue, and then you move the village. Um, this coincided with that drought, okay, the great drought. People always ask the question, well, why did they do it? I'm gonna leave you with this, because uh, I'm going with this. Okay. This is Wayne Taylor, he's a Hopi tribal chairman and an elder. Here's his reasoning, which is from the oral history that the Hopi uh, rely on. They don't write it down, okay? Oral history is carried on through specific people that are chosen in the village. Here's what Wayne has to say. He says, Hopi people consider these places to be the footprints or Kikako of our ancestors. We do not consider our ancestral sites to be abandoned. After centuries of migrations, our ancestors, the Asatsinam, people of long ago, left their ancient villages to complete their migrations by arriving at Tupuwanasabi, the center of the universe, and fulfillment of a covenant with Masao, the Earth Guardian. So what does that mean? Uh, the Hopi and a lot of the other cultures here, Pueblo cultures, believe we're in the fourth world, having emerged from three previous corrupted worlds. Then when they came into the fourth world, they met Masao, the Guardian, who gave them permission to stay here if they did certain things, do these migrations live a simple lifestyle, protect Mother Earth, and I'm sure other things, but that's what they did for thousands of years. Then this happened, okay? They started building these permanent dwellings. Villages started getting bigger. Hierarchy started developing. They weren't used to that. They didn't like that. Um, they felt they were being punished, and they, they blamed their uh, break of covenant with Masu to do those things that they agreed to. So they went back to migrating. That's why they left. That's the uh, yeah. Sanawa story. You guys ready to go see the ancient inscription? Yeah. yeah. That is some of the most significant ancient inscription you're gonna see anywhere in the Southwest because of the chronology, like I talked about, from Paleo all the way up to um, Yavapai and Apache. Every culture is represented in that alcove. We're currently heading from the ruins over to the grotto and with inside the grotto that's where all the pictographs are the paintings they use the natural dye to paint the wall and i guess it tells the story of a bunch of different cultures not just the culture of the Singwa people this whole 
tour was free. We didn't have to pay at all. We had our America Beautiful Pass we hung it in our window. If you don't have one, you can get a Red Rock Pass for like five bucks just for parking. And all these docents do this out here for you from 9.30 to I think two or three o'clock the last tour. So I think it's awesome and I highly recommend it if you're out in this direction. And looks like we are nearing the Rado. So welcome to the uh, grotto, everybody. This is a uh, this is an interesting place because nobody ever lived here. They lived over at the dwelling uh, before the Sanagua. There were hunter gatherers, archaics. They wandered from here down to Mexico City and back. And before that, there were Paleo Indians. For some reason, this has become kind of some kind of holy place for all of these people to gather. They're all a little different. We don't know what nearly any of it means. We do know that they mix their paints by grinding up mostly minerals, you know, rocks. But they, they throw in some berries and some flowers and some bugs. Then they would mix that powder with, with animal fat from their cooking fires. It's not all paint, but anything that's paint is oil paint. The Sanagua, who you just visited, uh, were very fond of white. The archaics that we talked about were real fond of red, left a lot of red blotches on the wall. And the Paleo Indians did a lot of scratching in geometric patterns. Almost everything here has been messed with by later people. Maybe they were just trying to gain some kind of knowledge or power from the ancients. We've got this Paleo geometric pattern scratched into the wall, but it's got Sanagua white paint over it. And here is a Sanagua rake symbol it's over a red blotch of paint, the red archaic paint. And then here's another Sanagua rake symbol, but it's it's been scratched over by Yavapai. All these white animal-like things are uh, Sanagua. The ladder's pretty new, but next to the ladder is a horse and rider. The horse's head's in the ladder, a banana-shaped horse. So that's Apache. So most of this stuff I'm just going to pass by real quick because we don't really know anything about it. We do know about these around the base, these bright new looking ones. The Sedona artist did those for us. She mixed her paint the way I just described. These are now part of our dust study. And someday uh, we're going to learn how to clean these things. <laughs> but we can't touch the wall now, and, you know, forbidden. This is a Sanagua solar calendar. This is a sun or a moon, and this is a mountain range. The mountains over here are white, and under the mountains over here, there are little black pointers. It's this mountain range. The white mountains are on my left. The pointers are over here. And when the sun comes up over that, over that first peak, it's about December 21st. It's about winter solstice. They know when it comes up over here, over that pointer, that's as far south as the sun's gonna go and it's gonna start working its way back. This this one on top is one of the Purdymans, and this one is Jim Thompson. These are founders of the city of Sedona. Those are over a hundred years old. There's some little ghosty guys here. The UFO people love to see them. And this is an agave roasting pit. To roast agave, they would have burned wood in this pit for days. Then they put the agave in and buried it and cooked it kind of luau style. You remember? the animal fat in the pigments, right? Okay, well, we had some white Sanagua zoomorphs on the wall up here, and they got the wall so hot that the animal fat in the pigment burned perfectly black images of what was painted here. And if you stand right here, you can look back there and see where Charles Willard lived for two years. Well, that's it for the Poloki historical site. We don't have time to do the Hanaki today. We hear that one has a really big room in it though, really big ruins. But we're gonna go to see if the Elks Lodge has a spot for us tonight. We need to charge our batteries up. That's all the time we have for this week. Join us next week as we continue exploring more of Sedona, Arizona. Thank you for watching this episode. We really appreciate every view. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing so you'll never miss another episode. And we'll see you next Tuesday for another adventure. Interested in joining our travel crew? 
head on over to our Patreon page and buy us a mile. All proceeds go towards bringing better content to you.